Hi, welcome to Lockdown Lads. I'm Nick Eid, and we are going to be with a great panel of uh, guests. We're going to introduce them now. We've got Andy Newton Lee, who's in uh, Los Angeles. He's an actor, he's a businessman, and he is quite crazy. And he looks fantastic over there. Hi, Andy. Just to prove he's in Los Angeles, he's doing that. I'm good, thank you. And also, we've got the brilliant Max Evans, who is in Portugal. Hi, Max. Hello. Um, Hi, everyone. Professional rugby player, amazing dancer on ice, and an all round beautiful man. Oh, very kind. How Great are you? Good? Here. Yeah, really good. Yeah, really good. Sending love from uh, a not a very sunny today Portugal, but the weather has been nice, as you can maybe tell from the tan. It's really nice here. I've got like a, a, a very good tan. And also, we've got Max Rogers, who's absolutely brilliant a model, a dad, a documentary maker, and also a Britain's Next Top Model judge. I mean, I didn't get through to the first round. I'm very upset. Still not talking <laughs> to him. How are you, Max? I'm very well, thanks. And don't worry, next time you'll have a pass. Thank you, babe. Especially with that beard, I'm sure anybody <laughs> will give me a pass and you too. Uh, it's great to have you all here. And Lockdown Land is all about discussion, all about us talking, you know, from our hearts. And we are all going through something at the moment that nobody thought they were going to be going through. It's uh, changed everything. You know, I had my birthday last week, first lockdown birthday, a really weird experience. In some ways, I quite liked it because I didn't have to organise anything and chat to people I don't really like. But the other thing too is, and I think it saved my husband a lot of money, and me too. But the other thing is, it is quite depressing. You can't be with your loved ones and it is a difficult time. And although, you know, everything is being more relaxed at the moment, I think what we're going through is a crazy time because we've had Boris Johnson tell us on Sunday that we had to be alert, whatever that means. Um, and, you know, we're all, though still being asked to stay home. So today is meant to be, today's Wednesday, and it is the day that they actually sort of relaxed the rules, which meant that we could use public transport. And we've all seen in the news, you know, the tubes are full, the buses are full, people are using them, but there's no social distancing going on. So I wanted to ask you, Max, what you thought about this. Do you think it's the right kind of measure from Boris? Do you think it's the right message? And would you go on a tube? I, I think what I think what the situation had become. I'm a person who's having an okay time in lockdown. It's not it's not it's not proving to be that much of a challenge for me. We have all of our challenges within our walls with our kids and the various things that we have to do anyway. So I, I I'm I'm doing okay. But even I was getting to the stage where I I needed something. I needed some hope, an agenda, a timeline, something to move towards. And I think that Sunday's speech. I'd checkpointed that as something that was going to be, you know, the start of the end of this of this thing. Um, and I, can, I can't imagine how other people must have, have been feeling who have been struggling through this situation. So I feel like Boris had to give us something. And it, in the end, there was nothing really to give. Um, he's, he's sort of relaxed the rules, but as we've all spoken about, it's been very vague, very confusing. And I think basically it's left us with pretty much the only thing to talk about here is the public transport pictures that we've mm. seen. It's the only thing that's really changed. And I'm not really sure what he expected to happen. How do you socially distance on a bus? I, I, don't, I, I honestly don't understand how that, how, how that would be the move to make at this point. If we are not able to, go, to, move, out, uh, to move out of lockdown, we should still be in lockdown. But if we are, then and we're allowed to go on buses, then we should be allowed to go to work and carry on. I don't understand these sort of half measures. Maybe there is a reason for this, but I can be sure that we weren't given that reason conclusively. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest problems is we actually aren't given, we're given sort of, we're told that something's going to happen, but we actually don't know what is actually really going to happen. And I think also the other thing too is that, you know, Boris Johnson is such a gross generaliser so he was basically talking about the UK as a whole. Now, if you lived in a small village, you can get on a bus and you'll probably be fine. But if you live in London or Manchester or Edinburgh, Glasgow, you're in somewhere where people are going back to work. They need to earn money, but they're risking their lives because they've been told they can go on this, but they've got to socially distance. And the councils aren't actually um, giving them the ability to have more and more trains or more and more buses because they can't physically afford it. So Max Evans, I know that you are not in the UK at the moment, but obviously you know about public transport, etc. What do you think about it? Yeah, sorry, I missed what you guys said. I, I would just answer you, Nick, by saying um, I would definitely 
uh, you know, if I was working in London, if I needed to take public transport, um, if it was how I took my usual commute, um, and you know, I, I've been told to go back to work, I would have no issue with going back to work. I've, I'm, I've not been in the country, sadly, um, to um, do all I can to help support, but um, I've. <laughs> I've been of the mentality and maybe it's because of my competitiveness, maybe it's because of my youth, maybe it's because of my health and maybe it's because of my confidence, but I've been of the men mentality from the bit very beginning that like, I've not been afraid of this virus. Um, that in fact, I'd rather get it. If I'm going to get it at some point, I'd rather get it during this period that I can be at home to fight it. And, uh, um, you know, and, and, and get, and get better and get, get up an immunity. So that's only in my personal kind of outlook on it. I've been um, not afraid of it. And I would answer by saying that I wouldn't be afraid to go to work. And, and I'd actually given being in lockdown um, and I'm sure there will be some people in those crowds of people that are, are in the tube that will actually be quite appreciating being back in what was so used to them actually being back around people and and being out of the house and uh and doing what actually they realized they really missed which was kind of people watching and you know just i don't know daydreaming from time to time that has gotten a bit you know we've been losing our minds kind of daydreaming stuck at home so um i'd be on that train i, I would have been on the train today <laughs> Well, listen, I mean, tell us actually what it's like in Portugal. Like, is the lockdown harder than ours? I think you went complete lockdown. You couldn't go out. Is that right? Yeah, we, we've had all the same um, uh, protocols. You know, we had, we've had total um, lockdown, couldn't leave the house. Um, my, so I'm out here looking after my mum and dad, and they live, fortunately, quite close to the beach. And you would think that, you know, getting out in the sun, the weather's been nice, you know, get on the beach and uh, get some sun, you know, how good the sun is for your health in moderation, etc. cetera. Um, but they've, they've had stints on weekends like bank holidays where they've completely said no one's allowed to go to the beach. You're allowed to walk on the beach, but you can't lay out and things like that. So but we, we've been very low with cases and um, yeah, now they're starting to open things up. Uh, leisure facilities are open. Um, and it's just really supermarkets that you have to wear. It's now compulsory to wear masks. Um, and yeah, it's, I, I would agree with Max by saying my, my lockdown has been, you know, I've, I've been sheepish just to say it to mates, but it's, it's been pretty amazing because it's, um, it's given me a chance to like go, go within something I was kind of getting, seeking anyway and it's just meant that I've been able to be at home um my my business that I've got businesses going like have all been in lockdown so nothing it's almost meant that well nothing can really move it further with that that I've I've just literally been like waking up in the in the morning and being like right I can literally do anything I want today I can read what I want I can look up what I want I can exercise when I want and um and that's been <laughs> pretty you know, I'm sure I'm not the only one. That's been pretty, uh, pretty special. But, um, but yeah, sorry, I'm going. No, on. I think I, I would. Think, uh, I think a lot of people are finding. Um, that. Yeah, things have been. I think people are finding that in a really good yeah, way. Yeah, actually. yeah, and, and and. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, and I was just going to say it's it's opened my eyes to, um, uh, an area you know with like of spirituality and, and we'll probably come on to it with the mental health stuff because it's very it's very relatable to that and very helpful for that that it's actually opened my eyes and opened my mind to actually there's a huge amount that I can be doing in this area that I was kind of starting to find that this time has really given me a chance to to go deep and and learn a lot and 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 get the tools or, or educate myself or get wiser to the fact of how I can help so many people. And we'll come on to it with, um, with the mental health stuff, but, but yeah, it's really exciting. But it's good to hear that, you know, I think everybody, 
whatever we're going through during this time, we're all come, going to come out with something that hopefully will be positive. Um, Andy, you're obviously in Los Angeles, and I think they announced today or yesterday that you have got another few weeks, or maybe I think it's months, actually still in lockdown there. So tell us a bit about that and what it's like for you with regards to transport and also what you think about the UK as well. Well, where do I start? Uh, just when you interjected there, Nick, you might have heard the superbike in the background. Um, so this lockdown experience has been uh, interesting for me. The people of Malibu have come out. Everybody's saying hi. We're all creeping across the road and, and, and sort of pitter-pattering and saying hi and laughing and going, are we exactly where we're supposed to be? You know, there's the question. Um, where do I start? Um, Los Angeles. Los Angeles uh, is um, it's such a weird energy at the moment because imagine that like apocalyptic uh, feel of I Am Legend or, or those movies where, it, where you go in and you're just like, whoa, sound and all that stuff. Um, you know, Nick, Max, we've all done work here in, in, in the States. So we all know that, that drawer of Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, we've all had some drinks and we've all socialized in it. And it's, it's a magical city, isn't it? But basically, um, I went down Hollywood Boulevard the other day and it, 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 it ain't a magical place at the moment. Um, it feels like Hollywood's falling apart, you know. And people in LA are all creeping back to their hometowns. Um, so I've been staying away from the news. I've been, tr I've been dabbing in and dabbing out because when this started... Um, the first person that I text was Nicky, and he said to me, Andy, calm down. You're going colossal. This is what you do. You're a risk, babe. Andy Newton Lee, always a risk. Correct, my friend. Um, but what that moment was, which was a big moment of discovery to, to, to sort of, I sort of felt this big blur, went out, went shopping, went crazy, did all my behavior. And then after the 40 day mark, I'm sort of like quite cool with, with it. Um, as, as men that have all worked in the entertainment industry, we've all had times of hardship and times on our own. And, you know, we've got sportsmen in this group. We've got every kind of, of guy as, as we evolve this, this panel show. Um, and, yeah, sorry I'm going off here. Los Angeles, it's weird. It's a very, very <laughs> weird... <laughs> Do you know what? You are the best person to interview because I never know what's going to come out of <laughs> I don't think he does for one, <laughs> one minute. <laughs> but all I can say is that stream of consciousness from Hollywood is dead to I am legend in one second will be the greatest thing I've ever had in my life. And that deserves its own star on the walk of fame, Andy. And if nobody gives it to you, you'll like pay for it. <laughs> Andy, uh, are you, do you have to wear masks in the supermarkets and stuff? Well, um... Yes, obviously. But um, people in LA are quite awakened and Malibu. I started panicking. I don't watch the news, guys, right? I don't watch TV. I haven't done it for five years, believe it or not. I, I dip in and out on the Daily Mail to see what trash people are reading. Have a little laugh and go back in my, uh, my garden and, and look at my turtles. Um, but I had a moment when the people in Malibu started doing that. And I went, well, if they're panicking, they're cut. They're cool, they're cool, these people down there. They don't panic about these fake viruses or whatever it is. So that was my awakening when I saw the people of Malibu panic. Um, and that's when I started delving deep and, and doing the research. And um, my people here are wearing masks. They are adhering to it. It's very respectful. It isn't like what you see on the news. Um, I'm not saying that isn't going on in other parts of the country. But we're sort of, we've got to a level where we're okay with it. And we're sort of, and... People are all right. It's, it's not that bad. It's the other parts of America and the media that, are, that raise your levels. Because when you tune into it, you know, if I, if, I was in, if I was in the midst of all that chaos looking at those images, I'd run to the nearest bridge. Because it's, it's polarizing. It's so polarizing. Well, I think, listen, I think that's going to happen to a lot of people that they, that, you know, they hear these stories and they read it and a lot of it's propaganda and a lot of it is quite disturbing. And I think that happened, that will happen all over the world that people will get distressed by what they read. So I think in many ways, it's good that you aren't reading as much as everybody. I, listen, my friends send me WhatsApps all the time and a lot of it's fake news. It's actually quite gross that they're doing it because you can't delineate, you know, you get these like, the government breakdown of what's going to be happening in lockdown in five easy steps. It's a complete lie. And you're like, what? First of all, why has that person spent 
hours writing 15 pages just to be forwarded on Inst- on on WhatsApp. But secondly, is that champagne? Guinness, mate. Guinness. Oh, I love that. My, my wonderful wife can pour a Guinness from home. I love that. Oh my hi, hi Kimberly. <laughs> uh, in <laughs> fact, this is pretty really weird, Max. What we should have done, you and I should have done this. Do, no, go back, go back, put it back, and then I'll do this. Wait, here we go. Yeah. Oh, oh, we could do this. Yes. There's the commercial. <laughs> There's the commercial. Sponsored by Guinness. <laughs> I've never had a Guinness oh. in my life. That's actually put in, put in a cake. Really? Oh, yeah, yes. Guinness is how and I look, but I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, okay, this is like the lad's drink, the Guinness. This is for when my friends come over in 20 years' time. And this is what I, me and my husband bought. Mojito mix for soda strength. <laughs> 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 if that doesn't if that doesn't sum things up nick <laughs> i know exactly he that's so fucked up it's, right this i was gonna say i wanted to say to your point about the fake news thing there's a part of me that looks at those pictures of the tube and wonders if that is a microcosm of what is going on. If there was one bus that was full, you know someone <laughs> would take a picture of it and it might be the only bus in London. Yeah. Day. I know they were doing that at the beginning of the lockdown. They were using pictures, like like archived pictures of packed tubes to try mm. and bash Londoners for not adhering to the lockdown yeah. rules. We know we know this. So you do you start to wonder. Now it may well have also been quite true, but it's the second guessing that you do to yourself because of the amount of nonsense that is out there. You don't yeah. know what is real and what isn't. So it might be real, but I'm not a hundred percent sure I can take that unless I sit myself. <laughs> I agree with you. Like we've got some pictures I, of where I, I this, cannot man. agree with you. Sorry, carry sorry, on. Nick. Yeah, I was saying. I, I, no, no, you carry on. I, I was literally agreeing. Like you were agreeing. You go. You go. Because in where I live in Shoreditch, there's a place called Broadway Market, and so the the Evening Standard and the Daily Mail pick up on it every weekend and say it's like a hub. And then so I basically was looking through the pictures and was actually looking for people with face masks. And there was two people right at the front with face masks, and then the rest of it was superimposed and you could kind of see it was cut and paste, pasted and you know, and this is again propaganda. It's like London, they're not doing it. They're gonna ruin everybody in the whole country is in lockdown because of us. And again, it's bad press, but that's what they do. Yeah, that's what, that's what people read. That's what people click on. And, and mm. we're all complicit because we do click on those things, but it's, it, at the same time, we, which, you know, it's chicken and egg, isn't it? Which, who's, who's to blame more than others? I see it with celebrities friend of mine comes out of her job every morning and she walks out separately she's a key she's deemed a key worker she walks out separately she get the paparazzi take a picture of her then they get her friend who comes out afterwards separate from her takes a picture in the same thing and superimposes them together and they don't write anything about social distancing but it's just in, it's just there it's so bad, yeah. goes, oh well they're obviously not taking social distancing seriously so next time a moral dilemma comes up you 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 can't remember why you why your opinion of them is tainted but it is because of that thing that you can't quite remember that happened this happens all the time yeah it does it does totally well listen i'm going to talk, move on a wee bit and we're going to talk about boris johnson uh, i don't know if you saw but miriam margulis on on tv was very very vocal about him uh, which was pretty on the last leg uh, max if you don't know what uh, Max Evans, if you don't know what Miriam said, it was basically that she wished he was dead, which is pretty brutal. Uh, and they, and it wasn't the best thing to do. But, you know, the thing is that Boris is coming across not particularly well because he isn't actually being as decisive as possible. So my question to you, Max Rogers, is if you were Boris for a day, what would you be doing differently? I would, first off, try my best to think my way through some of the scenarios that he's setting out for us. Um, pretty much every, <laughs> single, every single thing he laid down there doesn't apply to most of the people he's talking to. And I wonder if this was intentionally vague or did he just not think it through or, 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 or does he li- is he literally completely detached from how people are living their lives? Because even, even, even one that doesn't matter so much, you can play sports now but only with people in your house. 
what does that even, what does that even mean? We've been in our house with the same people. We could have played sports with them the whole time if we've got if yeah. we're lucky enough to have a garden. So you're not really adding anything to that situation because no one can. That doesn't that doesn't mean we can suddenly all go out and play football. We could already kick a ball around with our mum if we wanted to. Uh, I, I, I and I'm wondering if it was again. I go back to my point. He had to say something. So he sort of said stuff that sounds like it's something, but then when you actually think it through, it's this is nothing. Um, yeah. I would, I would that. So my advice would to him would be to at the very least think your way through some of these scenarios that you're setting out for us. So you, you can play it out in all the different ways it could it, it could go, and and maybe then be a little more concise with what it is you're saying. Uh, yeah, well, I totally agree with you, and I think the other thing too is that he should think about as we know the whole of the country because obviously he's different from Nicola Sturgeon up in Scotland that's where my family are that's where yours were Max you know we know that place really well and it I, I could mm-hmm. drive up and see my brother I got to Scotland but then I actually because I'm allowed out but then Nicola says you're not allowed in my country because the rest of the family isn't allowed out so it's like what the hell yeah. you know and these things are just crazy so Max Evans what do you think if you were Boris for a day what would you want to change yeah I just echo what Max said and just add as well something that is really worrying me um, because they've they've allowed golf out here now but again same sort of thing household only two balls and and also wearing masks as well and I've seen a lot of people out here um, because obviously it's nice to be outside and exercising but exercising with masks on um, uh, outside now I'm not doctor i'm not a scientist or anything but i do know that we as a sportsman um i have the knowledge that we naturally um exert bacteria in our breath out like like we like we um dispose of other toxins in our sweat in our breath our bacteria right now masks are fine if you're in close proximity confined spaces like supermarkets and you're only doing it for a short space of time but if you are exercising or you're on the golf course, which is, you know, four hours and you're wearing a mask, that is how long your the bacteria that your body is naturally trying to release is is getting held up in this mask. And you are actually breathing back in your kind of back your, your wastage bacteria. So mm. again, I I agree with Max. Like Boris, there's there's details in these things that you know, they just don't make sense to a lot of people. And, and are actually, if you really break it down, some of them are actually, well, like this one in particular is, is worried. But, but what I would do with Boris, which is the question, is, and it kind of touches on what Max was saying as well about the media and, and you know, how much of what we're seeing, because, like, literally this time alone and having time to, like, read and, and like what you said, Nick, receiving all these WhatsApps and different bits of content coming in, alternate media and whatever, but also really seen and and look, I, it's only me. It's only my decision. I'm I'm like you guys. I'm just a you know pretty basic lad who who yeah just wants to live a happy life, you know, a pleasant life, uh, and have a shitload of fun. Um, that all of this, I'm I'm scared like everyone else because no one's been in this situation before, and we're like, and all of a sudden, I I've genuinely seen enough ed- evidence to at least open my mind to the fact that what we are seeing on the media, on the mainstream media, isn't necessarily the truth, right? I'm not saying all of it is bullshit, but there could be a lot that is not true, right? So if I was Boris for the day, I would, I would, one, have access to what is true and what is not true, right? And that's not just in the UK, that's in the world, right? If you're, if you're at that level of power, okay, surely you have access to the truth of what's going on in the world in terms of, you know, I'll just, even things like free energy, right? I'll just throw that out there. Free energy, meaning like the ability to have free energy as a resource, okay? Um, if I was Boris, I'd have access to all this truth and I would tell people the truth about just what is going on like you you know i i think there's just so much going on that we don't know about and there's people they're trying to control us as the massive and and you can go real crazy with this or not 
but there is so much going on that it is that I believe as a human, as a fellow human as you guys, we have a human right to know just what exactly, even if, even if it scares the crap out of us, right? Even if it scares the crap out of us, I don't think it's going to be that much scary than, than the worst case scenario people are already, have already manifested in their mind countless times throughout this period, right? Worst case scenario is we're going to run out of money and not be able to survive, right? I'm sure that's crossed a lot of people, people's minds, you know? What if, what, if, what if this virus, okay, it's looking like we're coming out of it, but at some point in this lockdown, I thought, I, I, it did cross my mind, what if they close the supermarkets? What if we actually can't go and get stock up on any more food? What if we are actually resorting to the tin food? Like, as in, seriously, if, it's, if, if they close the supermarket, what if, they, what if people taking our waste stop taking our waste? You know, they can't take, as in chaos, right? That was the worst case scenario that I'm sure was going on. In, and so whatever the truth is, you know, aliens, let's go real out there, whatever, like higher I've, powers that are controlling things and whatever, right? Whatever, it, I, I've, I've thought of the worst case scenario, like a lot of people, that, that even, even the truth of, of being like aliens, just organizing us or whatever, it's going to be there or thereabouts with the worst case scenario I've already kind of been scared of, okay? So Max, Max, if I was Boris for the... Wait, I'll just finish, Andy. If I was Boris for the day, I get the truth and I tell everyone and then at least we'd know the truth. True. Andy, let's hear from you. Well, I just want I just wanted to uh, say we've all got to be very careful that we don't turn into Karen from Facebook because we've all got a bit of Karen in us, haven't we? We've all got a bit of Karen. We all want to share information. And uh, Nick's controlling my inner Karen very well. Who's I, Karen? Who's Karen from Karen. Facebook? Karen. So Karen is the, uh, this is the Karen, uh, the Karen, uh, what's the word? This is the Karen theory, the, the Karen concept. What is it? The Karen, um, the Karen principle. I'm going to explain the Karen principle for you. Okay. The Can you do it, Can you do it in Summarize three it. sentences? <laughs> the Karen, the Karen principle is, um, it's basically, you know, relaying gossip and information that we doesn't we don't know it's gossip true that we heard at the supermarket um you know gone gossip. from chickens done. all right that's it so we need to shut that down um and what would it's you do if you were boris what would you do if you were boris what would i would do if i was boris i i would hire better people to write my speeches that's what i'd do um <laughs> he's, well well what boris is doing is he, he's a low-level trump isn't he and he's, um, he's gaslighting people, and we've had a lot. We know about gaslighters in this group, because it's one of my favorite topics, and that, there's a lot of gaslighting in the entertainment industry. Back to you. You all know you are. Um, and people are going one way, and then they're going the other, and then they're misunderstanding the message. These are Karens and COVID Huns, aren't they? These are the, these are the guys that we're talking to. These are people that, that are in a state of panic and trauma, and then the Prime Minister is going, stay in, but go out, and stay in, and go out, but you can go with friends, but you maybe can't, and people are walking away from it going, going, what did he just say? <laughs> but I tell you one thing, here in Los Angeles, at least he's not telling people to, to go, go for the disinfectant. Well, that's true, very, very true. If I was um, Boris for a day, I think I'd go on Amazon, Andy, and I would actually order a comb for Boris. Oh, <laughs> I would do. It's the only thing I'd do. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> and then he can, uh, you know, that's... that. Well, Boris and, and some hairspray. <laughs> Listen, we've all got... Abuse, I just want to say, Nick, any abuse towards our Prime Minister at this time is only acceptable if it's in banter, right? Exactly. We can't go attacking everyone because it just goes in waves and we just, we do this work. Well, we and don't want that negative energy. It is important at the moment, sorry, I'm sure. Andy, sorry. I'll, I'll give you that. It is important at the I, moment is that we, uh, we ask. I, I was just going to say, I'll give you that, Andy. I think one of the things we have to respect and understand is that this is a completely unprecedented situation. We're learning new things 
every hour about it. So the chances are the messages will be mixed and they will be contradicted and they will change. And we all have to be patient and calm enough to do our best to go along with those things. Having said that, it's to a point, isn't it? He does need a better speechwriter, as you say. <laughs> well, he needs a better speechwriter and he needs somebody to actually help him deliver. And he actually probably needs Nicola Sturgeon's uh, speechwriter because I think she's been really good and kind of succinct in what she says. But lots of us have been talking about our time. Sorry, Andy. You could hire one of us to do his speeches. We, we seem I, Well, to... listen, Andy, they can't have you because we don't want war and peace. We want to have a really quick, succinct <laughs> little book from Ladybird. And you ain't going to do that. <laughs> so anyway, we all, though, have got lots of time on our hands. And we call it quarantine. And, you know, we're doing everything from you know, doing TikToks, which I'm absolutely obsessed by, through to cooking and doing all those fun things. But also, you know, uh, this time is also good for ourselves. And as Max was saying, both Maxes were saying, it's really good to look into yourself and actually think about who you are as a person. But I want to ask each of you what you're using for this time, because we are finding ourselves, we don't need to commute. We, we haven't got the jobs that we have normally. We are in our own sort of little bubble. What are you doing in your quarantine, Max Rogers? I, well, I quite. I mean, first of all, we have we've we established a routine very early based around our kids. We've got two kids we have to somewhat homeschool, plus a baby who we're getting through teething and the various things that a baby requires. So our routine is deliberate and definite every single day, which suits me down to the ground. I absolutely love knowing where I am. I love the fact that I'm not wasting time going anywhere. That you can just get straight on with things. And what we've done is we've established pockets of time. Where we, where we can do all, that we've tried to do as many of the things that we've not been able to do and all those little ideas, that those itches that we need to scratch over the years. Um, and we've, we've tried to put that into, we, I'm hopeful that I'll come out the other side with all my ideas taken care of or at least attempted. I'm finding that actually I'm probably just creating more ideas and I have more to do than ever I did, which is probably something I'm going to have to come to terms with and know about myself. I will never get to the end of my to-do list. Having said that, we've explored some nice opportunities and uh, I know Kim's teaching, we've, we've got ourselves a, um, a, an online platform where Kim teaches dance and I teach Pilates. Uh, we've shot a pilot for a family food show that we've got. Uh, we're doing a thing for a day in the life of us. Um, I've written, wrote a script. Things have just, we've, we've taken the time and really, we're time efficient during this period and we've really, we've really used it well. And I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite pleased with that. On the flip side, it would be nice if we were in a position to just take a little bit of time out. Unfortunately for us, we weren't, Kim was preparing for a tour. We weren't in a position, we, we had all our money deferred for this year and we weren't in a position to stop working. So it's been sort of born out of necessity as well. But I am quite proud of the amount of things we've tried and done and the ideas that have fallen away, but some of them have got legs. And, um, I've, and like this one, this one in itself, we've connected, we've put this together and, we've, and, 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 and here we are. I, I think that's yeah, what yeah. this time has proved. There's been no excuse. No, oh, well, I've got to go here first or I've got to go there on Saturday or maybe I can meet you next Tuesday for coffee. No, it just if you have an idea, it gets done. And that's, that's, that's sort of been the theme of our lockdown I think I'm quite pleased with that to be honest well I think yeah I, th I totally agree with you I think one of the best things about this as you just said is that you can actually pitch anything whether whatever you're doing to the direct person because they can't make that excuse and say unfortunately you've got to talk to my uh, secretary because they're probably furloughed anyway and <laughs> you know you just go directly to them and they'll say yes or no and I think that's a really great thing to do and you feel like you, you, there's more connectivity there in a weird way and you can do a zoom meeting or your whatsapp uh, or whatever you want to do. So Andy, you're obviously in Los Angeles and you're just there by your pool looking fabulous and chatting to Megan and Harry. So um, what are you doing in your quarantine? <laughs> don't, don't say that, Nick. You're going to get me in trouble. Oh, sorry. Um, m &H. Top secret big celebrities. Um, so we've got Daniel Craig around the corner. Simon Cowell's three minutes away. I don't know any of them. But uh, in Malibu, things just pop up, you know. So um, I'm, doing, I'm doing lockdown in luxury, and it's fantastic, and I'm doing it on my own. Well, I'm lying a little bit. I've got, I've got a couple of staff that work with me that, that help me run, run my mini little uh, empire here. So 
That sounds so self-indulgent, doesn't it? I'm just doing a lot of yoga, and um, I've been having a lot of chats to Max Evans, talking about self-development, and Max, been, Max has been pulling me back into myself and sorting my head out. And I'm just, it's time to be truly creative, take away the money. Um, money, money was ta- not taken as where we wanted, wanted us to take it, and it hasn't been taking me uh, where I wanted it to take me for about five years. So I feel a little like, uh, uh, that, that my, my, pre, my, my pre, prefix to this, I was always preparing for it because I started a yoga instructor three years ago, um, very quietly. And Max Evans was one of the first people that I've, I, I, I told at Coachella. And then I took Nick Eade on a, on, on a hot yoga class and we, we did circuits nearly naked together. Um, <laughs> and um, good up, Nick. Uh, and I've just been doing a lot of yoga, and I've been, uh, you know, trying to reach out to as many people as possible to to see what people are doing in every state of trauma, in every 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 part of danger that we experience. There's a huge window of opportunity, and um, I just love the way and the speed that this group has come together to open this dialogue. So we've been working on creative collaborations. I've been speaking to, to my friends in Hull to see what they're doing. I've been trying to keep in tune with how, how the, uh, you know, my old life are living it. Um, but didn't, Andy, didn't you win an like, like, influential man in Hull Award for the 50th year running? Well, I was, the, I was the, voted the coolest person in Hull this weekend, I think. No, I gave myself that title. I was one of the coolest people, but I should be the number one. That's next year. Um, but mate, it's just great to be that we've all, we're, we're, we've all come together and we've all decided to use our voice and our celebrity, whatever that is. And we're having a chat and, and, and we want to get this message out there. And now is the time. So what am I doing in quarantine? Developing TV concepts. That's what I'm doing. I'm reading. I'm doing a life audit. I'm getting out all my childhood pictures. I'm reverting back to, you know, childhood, seeing where my behaviours came from. Um, and, and I'm trying to get out my own head because it's getting a bit too much. But listen, guys, we can use this time as a, 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 a very, very big period of growth. And we're going to have to meditate through it. And, I, and I, my Isn't meditation, meditation about breathing, like Andy? So I think you need to learn a bit more about breathing. <laughs> I was just <laughs> about to say, Andy, Andy, do you know what would be a really cool trick that you could come out of, um, out of lockdown with? When you're speaking to, when you get to speaking to people that you haven't spoken to in ages, obviously because everyone's been in lockdown. But when you're going off on one, just every now and then, just stop mid conversation, mid statement, and just take a few long breaths, <laughs> and then and then <laughs> and then get back into it again, and just see see how people react. Or you could just breathe and just don't exhale. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving. <laughs> oh, he's got have one beer while we're doing this. One beer. beer, good for you. Um, so yeah, I mean, one of the th- biggest things that we've been talking about before, and all of this actually kind of goes into one, is about mental health because I think all it doesn't matter people's perception of us might that be that we're successful, that we are, we've got our families, we've got our partners, you know, whatever. But we're all in this in a different way and we're all experiencing different things at the moment and i think the mental health stuff is really really important next week is mental health awareness week but to be honest i think every single day is mental health awareness day uh, at the moment because there is so much going on and i can sit there sometimes with my husband having the best time and then in my heart i just feel scared because i don't know what the future is going to hold as as max rogers said you know the fact of the matter is i've got a business that now has 90 percent of our business has gone it's all events so what does that do for me do i need to think of a new business do i need to pitch things come up with lots of different ideas you know it's 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 hard and when you hear that key workers can go out and people are going out and they're starting to work that's inspiring but then there's people like us who have to stay at home because there's nothing else to do but we can still be very very proactive doing things like this which helps with our mental health because we can talk about stuff but um max evans you obviously talk a lot about mental health and i think that you've obviously used this lockdown time to really look into yourself have you found it beneficial and is there any advice you give to anybody who's going through a bit of a struggle at the moment well that's exactly the words that i want to open with which is 
that's exactly what I've been trying to piece together into how how can I use what I've learned? How can I how can I um, demonstrate in in a kind of easy little nutshell gift that can be great advice for someone, anyone um, to kind of receive and to actually help them. And um, <clears throat> it's I've kind of narrowed it down to this, and this is still a little bit long-winded, right? But just bear with me because this is narrowed down to the full, like, I can't tell you how much information I've received over the, like, the last six weeks, how much my mind has just been, like, blown, right? Now, I'm wearing this, so this is the beginning of the vice for everyone, okay? For everyone that needs any mental health advice, okay? I'm wearing this t-shirt for a reason, and it says one on it, okay? Now, we know we're on one planet, right? We know we're in one universe. We know technically there's one God, you know, there's different religions, but there's one of us, each of us as well, okay? One is a very important thing because it's everything, and it's also nothing, okay? Well, right, I just needed to say that. But we are all one, okay? Mick's mind, Max's mind, Andy's mind. It's all your own mind and it will always be your own mind. Your one mind, okay? Now, what I've got closer to, what I've gone deeper into, what I've been able to understand is that we're also one essence, right? So there, with this one self, this one human being that we call our name and that we have these dreams and these fantasies and these fears and all the emotions and whatever there's one of that but then we also there's an essence inside of us right when we say go deep spirit soul whatever you want to call it energy i'm going to call it an essence right now this one essence that's inside of me right is the same essence that's inside of all of you inside of max inside of nick inside of andy inside of everyone watching, right? It's the same essence. It's just an essence, it's an energy. You can call it a love vibration, a happy vibration, but it's just, and it's, it's an essence because an essence doesn't think, it doesn't influence, it doesn't judge, it just is watching, right? Now, just as my essence is watching my life, your essence is just watching your lives, okay? And for your essence that's watching it, it's a pretty cool trip because they just get to watch your life and whatever you're doing. And they're, they're not bothered by the, the mental content, the fears and, and all that. They literally just get to watch what's going on. Right. So right now, all our essences that have been watching all of us freaking out in quarantine or like, I don't know, doing crazy stuff or, or like, you know, I've been exercising on the beach, been really lucky. I've been having moments dancing on the roof to myself, like with the sun going down. And I've been like, this is, this earth is incredible, right? This feeling that I'm feeling now, this joy, like listening to the music, feeling it, wow. And I'm thinking, if I'm, if I'm experiencing this level of joy and bliss, right? Because of Andy touched on it with the polarity, you know, that exists in the universe, you know, good, evil, light, dark, there's always a polarity. I was thinking if I'm if I'm having this amazing time and my essence is watching this amazing time, there's sadly going to be someone someone else's essence in the world, right? Someone else because it's a polarity that's not having such a good time right now, that's suffering, you know, that's maybe sick, that maybe lost a loved one, or you know, like I I can't be having this amazing time without someone uh, having a you know a, a, a really tough time. Likewise. I haven't, I haven't had any tough times, right? I haven't had any tough times, um, but there are someone that has. And in that tough time when you're like, why is this happening to me? You know, and I know I'm going to have tough times before my life's over. So when I do have a tough time and, and instead of being like, why is this tough time happening to me or whatever, you can take a few breaths and just check yourself that although you think you're having this tough time, like there must be millions of people that have suffered over this period, right? In that tough time that you think you're having, right, that you're experiencing, 
if you have the ability to take a few breaths, right, and feel your essence that is just watching behind your eyes, that is just peaceful, and then coming back to the one, and then to realize that that essence is the same essence in everyone else on the planet, right? Everyone else on the planet, everything in the universe, okay? And if you touch that essence and then you realize that you are part of something that is everything, you are part of something that is so big, right? That is like this infinite, amazing essence, okay? Then for a moment, it just takes you away from your individual, like, self of worry or whatever, or whatever it is you're suffering about in the time. It just takes you away from that enough of a time and the more you practice the better you, you can stay longer in that area but it just takes you whatever it is you're going through the suffering it's going to pass the, the big thing with me is is i i want to yeah i just want to help like i just want to help because it just when you when you realize that you're part of this big energy and when you can tap into it and all it, and everyone can tap into it. This is the thing. People are like, I can't meditate. I can't meditate. Like, can't stop my mind thinking. Like, medit meditating is watching your mind thinking. It's watching, or it's 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 like watching your movie. It's just sitting there and watching all the crap that's going on in your mind, or all the dreams, fantasies. And over time, the more you get better, better practice at just watching, the more that mind all of a sudden is like. Simmer down, simmer down, simmer down, simmer down. Simmer down, I love that. And then it, the mind can't understand this energy, this essence, right? Because the mind needs like form, it needs like content, okay? Simmer down, simmer down, simmer down. right? Well, you know what? And, you, you, uh, and when, obviously, Max Ogre, I, for so long, being a rugby player, I thought, I thought, I was just going to say, for so long being a rugby player, I thought yoga was just about getting flexible, right? I didn't know it was about actually just meditating, and it was about touching this. And I never, I've never even touched this energy before. It's insane. <clears throat> yeah, that's quite good. Anyway, isn't it? Sorry. sorry. So yeah, just is that actually you, or is that a fake leg? <laughs> that's me, look. Oh. Oh dear. Don't say I've been doing work on myself. It's been three, four hours a day. Well, tell us about the work that you've been, been doing on doing. yourself, Andy, then, because I think, Max, what you were saying was that we all do need to take that time out and look into ourselves. And I think, obviously, it's really important to have people out there like you who can show people that you can change your mind and your mindset. Because I'm like, I before, I never done a, I did a, what do you call it, a sound bath last week and I've been doing it every couple of days and I'm loving it. I had no <laughs> idea what it was, but now I really like it. So again, it's like that self kind of knowledge stuff. So Andy, what are you doing? Well, Nick, um, we've uh, been on the mental health dialogue uh, bandwagon, as people would call it, for many, many years. And you, you've you been on it for, for way ahead of me. But um, I started using my own experience and my own thoughts as sort of an experiment. Um, and that's when I started to delve deep, you know, like with, with like what Max has done. Um, and it's just about exploring your thoughts, you know, working out what, what's ego, what's not, what's real, what's sitting in the subconscious, what's the media. Because as soon as I turn CNN on, it, my, my levels go woo like this. So I, I take my sound bites from what I need to know and I go back to my, I go back in my box to the, to the back of my garden work. Um, and you've just got to be very careful about who you're around and what you allow in, in your life. And I've realized that through this, um, I've triggered people with my behavior of, of my panicky behavior. Nick told me when Andy, you, you've got to calm down. Um, and you know, that's what's happening with a lot of people. I just want to say, you know, on behalf of all these boys and everybody that's agreed to be involved in this project, cause it's coming on absolutely fantastically, you know, we, we are in, in, in tune with what's going on. We are in tune with the, the people back at home that are, are not as lucky as us. So make no bones about that. This is not us giving, giving advice from our, our, you know, our homes and all this. It's not celebrities virtue signaling. So make no bones about that. We've all felt this in, in, in many, many ways. Um, yeah. Um, it's a good time to be present. I've spent my whole life. I, I spent the 
the first 37 years running away from myself, going to parties, flying to London, doing this. I'm looking back at my story and going, what a phenomenal story. But again, it brings us back to where we are today. And anyone that's questioning themselves should, should carry on questioning themselves because you've, you've got to question yourself. It's confronting, you know, it was your routine working for you because mine wasn't. I had some chats with Nicky when he came over two months ago. We did a self-care week together, didn't we? We had a great time. Well, you did self-care. I went to the office. You, did. you went to the office. <laughs> didn't, didn't we know about it? Didn't we know yeah, about we it? We all knew about it. So, Max, I mean, obviously with you, you've got, you've got your family and you've got a new young uh, child and you've got two other kids and you're married and, you know, you have to take some time out for yourself. How hard is that? Because I think people forget that, you know, we all, we can all, you know, as you just said, we're a brilliant unit and we've got our time and we space everything out. But surely there's some time where you just need some of Max's time out. Yeah, we don't get it, is the answer to that question. In this period, we do not get it at all. And it's requiring to, to try to tap into some of the things. I've explored some of the things that Max has said over the years, had my own journeys and own thoughts on things. Um, but I have to say that time to think about those things has to be parked in lieu of a huge leap of faith that the fears that you're feeling are just going to be all right somehow. And to try and focus, and it takes a huge leap of faith to, faith to focus on the positives that I mentioned earlier that actually might come good from this situation. The other point to make about a person in the family, in a, in a family like me, is it's not just my mind I'm responsible for anymore. I have three kids to be scared for as well, and my wife and my dog counts just as much as well, you know. But that's, that, that makes it, the, the theory requires yet another leap of faith that you're taking on not just because I, I totally agree with everything Max is saying. I think it's a wonderful concept to sit and observe your own mind. It's so grounding and, 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 and can get you through any situation. But when you have to do that on behalf of three kids whose fears you're taking on as well, without any time to do it, it requires a leap of faith. And really, going through this myself and experiencing this myself if you were to ask me to advise or give advice to anyone in this in this situation like me i haven't got that advice but all i can tell you is i'm just thinking to myself well it'll be okay won't it mm. surely it'll be okay and and i and it will be of course it will be and then you and you and you snap out of it and just get on with what it is that you're doing a huge element of of uh, another layer basically to the fear and everything that you're feeling and everything that you have to work through that you're doing this on behalf of children as well you know definitely i can imagine max evans what do but, you think but max max i'll just say those i like and this is so good to be talking about this and talking and this is almost me my practice in what i've learned trying to speak with someone like yourself who's just said that and i'm trying to relate it to what i've learned and i'm thinking well those the fears you're putting on top of your own fears like your children's fears or um you know kimberly's fears it's it's all still the same fear in your own mind you're just you're adding it more in in your own mind that your your children's minds they're, I'm sure they're not scared at all. You've created a, you know, they just think, well, I've been at home quite a lot, you know, and uh, mummy and daddy are always here. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm sure their minds are on like literally, I mean, children's minds are already kind of on cloud nine, but they're like right up there in the stratosphere because it's just like, you know, they don't know about, they're not watching the news. How old's your oldest? Uh, Willow's five and yeah, I mean as you say potentially they are having the time of their lives and I, I, I take huge comfort from the fact and I've said this before that in a, in a year's time in a month's time in 10 years time we're going to look back at this time as some of the best times of our lives and can you imagine that for the kids this is going to define their childhood particularly my five-year-old who's going to have a solid memory of this and like you say we've done a good job of protecting them from any kind of fear and they don't really need to have any fear as it as it is i mean they're going to be just fine we're all going to be just fine but i guess the fears that we feel are for our status quo being altered and and as you say it, it, your status quo shouldn't matter because we are all just an essence and one being moving through lives moving through moments 
Uh, but when you have to sort of think on behalf of other people, it just sort of it adds a bit of jeopardy to the situation, you know. But I take your point. It is, it is. It's just all I'm doing is bulking up fears and situations. Your, 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 your no. own fear, which because you're, 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 you're taking on what you think. Yeah, it's mate. It's a trip. Like as in, I um. I want to speak to more people about things like this because I, like I said, I've, I've been learning a lot of this stuff and it's all right for me because I, I've only got my mind. So if I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not scared of anything right now. And, I, and then I'm trying to think, okay, well, if I had kids, um, you know, I'd be worried about their future, obviously, but like, as in, I can only worry about their it's them that's going to be living their future. So it's them that are going to have to be dealing with it anyway, not me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like as in, I try and break it down and stuff. And when, and it, as you're breaking it down, that is watching it. You're watching it and you're asking yourself questions. And then you start thinking like, well, I don't really need to be worried about them as much. I just keep being a great dad and, and showing them a good time and stuff. And, and you know what I mean? Like you start to, it start to, yeah, you can rationalize it, it, I guess. Totally. You can. But I, I think in it's, in, and it's great to have conversations like this because you do, you suddenly rationalize it and you think, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Um, I think what this situation has done is it's intensified everyone's mindsets. So if you are a little bit along the morbid side, you'll be incredibly morbid. If you're a little bit anxious, you'll be incredibly anxious. If you're incredibly happy, like, Max, I see you're, you're, you're an outwardly happy guy and I'm seeing you be happier than you've ever been. And, it's, and it does, it really intensifies and, and grows all of those feelings within us. But then I have also, but you're exactly right, but then I have also had the worst fear. I have also, I'm human, I've, had the, I've, I've got a human mind, I've painted, I've got, it's a fearful mind as well as a loving mind. Um, it just, it's more in the loving state than in the fearful state. But I've, dipped into the fearful state and gone like but it's and gone like well wait what if what yeah. if next okay this this time around this time around it's been bad don't get me wrong and and we're going to be recovering this for, for ages but like what if next time around and and i'm uh, sorry to just scare for a moment but like what if we they we can't people can't work at the supermarket they can't get produce there what if they cut the water off what if they don't take the rubbish out and all of a sudden, what the heck, you know? In this, uh, unpre- in this unprecedented uh, time, your mind is able to go to unprecedented places. Exactly. So then, so we've, 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 we've got to be very careful. Wait, wait, wait. I'll just say is that I've, I've talked myself in to be like, okay, well, um, if my, over the course of, I'm going to rethink how I was planning my future in terms of, well, ideally, um, you know, I'm hope I don't have my own house yet. I can't, you know, I can't wait to, um, you know, do the whole family thing and, and itching to do it and stuff. But I'm already thinking, well, I want my future house to like, you know, maybe have my own like little veg garden or my own like or at least have a little lot where i know that well worst case if something is to happen in the future or i've got kids that i'm educating them you know to to like actually grow their own stuff so that if this comes around again when and i'm not worried about this worst case scenario that i'd be worried about because i'll be like okay well you know my kids know how to grow it anyway yeah sorry i think it's i think it's really interesting the whole thing i think you know one of the things i I, i'm taking away from this is a lot of people go oh we're on the same boat and my my advice is we're actually in a different boat but we're in the same sea so we've all got different feelings that we're going through we're all going through stuff and you know i say this all the time to everybody who calls lots of my friends call me up and they ask me my advice and i just say listen this journey is relative to you I can't go on yours, you can't go on mine, and just you winning this that is unknown to all of us is actually success in whatever shape or form you've got through it. Because, you know, Max, your kids are gonna be reading about this in history books. You know, this is the future. They're gonna be reading to their kids about this great, well, not great, but, you know, this terrible thing that happened. Yeah. But it was, in, well, you know, one of the, this is the, the biggest shift worldwide that, we, that anybody's ever been through apart from the, from the plague from 1918, whenever, you know, 
which so it's, it's it's a massive shift for all of us and i'm going to end it here now guys and first of all say thank each and every one of you for doing lockdown lads we love you all if anybody wants to follow you they can go on your instagrams and your twitter uh don't follow andy he's uh he's got nothing to say and it'll take about three hours to say it if he does uh but honestly we are going to be doing loads more lockdown lands with lots of different guests but you guys have been absolutely brilliant and we really enjoy people asking us questions so to email us do tweet us do put us on instagram we want to hear questions from you and if you do have any issues with mental health there are lots of brilliant phone lines you can go to there's a great charity called mind which is very important which you can Google, you phone 111 if you've got any health issues as well, because we what we have realized is, and this is a big thing, we'll talk about this next time, is that we're all talking about Corona and COVID-19, but there are a lot of health issues that are coming off the back of this that aren't being addressed. And I think, you know, it's very important if you do feel sick, phone the national, the NHS, because they're still there for you. But thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, all the key workers. Thanks, Hollywood. affected by any of the issues raised during this program from the number on screen or visit www.samaritans.org.